Hello, everybody. Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and we are back with more Cobra Convergence content. And this time, we have Toy Domination. So I would like to uh, introduce these guys and ask them to introduce themselves. Guys, can you uh, tell us who you are and uh, what you do on the Toy Domination channel? Yeah, so uh, I'm Dom. I'm Joe. And uh, we're best friends from long, long ago. <laughs> And we decided, you know, oh, it rhymes now. <laughs> I, I just that was out of the top of my head. New slogan, uh, yeah, like, new, new slogan. Yeah, stop that thought... rhyming, and I mean it. <laughs> Anybody want a peanut? Um, <laughs> yeah, what do we uh, what do we do, Dom? <laughs> we play with our toys, so that's that's, that's bottom line. Like, we're we love to just get stuff out of the packages, get our hands in these. We've got kids, we like taking and making games of it. We like setting up dioramas, we like play sets, we like to play with our toys. That's the biggest you know form of what we've kind of formed this channel around yeah um, and then joe we've the got a live show. yeah yeah, yeah the live show is kind of like more of a me and dom have been friends for a long time and we have had a million conversations about whatever toy lines coming out or whatever we're excited for or whatever we're buying at the time so like it kind of let's just talk about that in a public forum and we kind of have little segments like we call it news ish but it's sort of just like because everyone else has already talked about it that are actually news toy related kind of stuff so so we have like different segments and we kind of talk about what we're we want to buy or what's coming up and then we we usually have a guest on or we have somebody there to highlight or a creator or someone that's building something cool in the three and three quarter arena usually and or sometimes it's a kickstarter or you know something like that and then we usually kind of round it out with like the toys we picked up that week and um you know kind of just kind of have fun talking about toys on the live show in the awesome. spectrum. Uh, and I, I think that you've had uh, some guests that uh, the audience here would know. I, uh, I think I'm, I'm uh, you sure, had yeah. uh, Articulated Chad on. Um, mm -hmm. And you, uh, before we started the interview, you mentioned uh, Zazel. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, what other uh, guests and who do you like to have on your show when you're doing your live or, or your other show or your other videos? So, so Chad and Frazel. Uh, Frazel. Frazel. Chad and Frazel. <laughs> <laughs> Reach Chad out. and Zazel. Reach yeah. One, two, three. Chad and Zazel are uh, really good friends of the channel. We've got a lot of other friends that um, have really actually helped us kind of grow and figure this out, which is awesome. We kind of have like these big brother channels. We'd be like, hey, how do you do this? Or what do you do with this stuff? So it's awesome to be able to have that positive community of peers that you're not really competing with each other. You're all trying to help each other out. <clears throat> and they've showed us things like, hey, you do cross streams. You do a gimmick like Saturday morning cartoons. And like, it's been really mm -hmm. fun to learn all these tricks with them. Um, and then we've also, so there's like our ongoing friends that we do cross streams with, or, you know, hop over their channels, but then we, like Joe said, we recently been reaching out to Kickstarters. Like we've got, uh, armies yeah. of Ashmore coming up. We talked to, um, hidden force. Like we love to be able to see these people who are just mm -hmm. so passionate that they actually went out of the way and took all the risks to make a toy line. Like that is amazing. That, that's what I want to do. But yeah. Um, so even if it's not like even when we're doing even if it's not three and three quarter we're usually talking to somebody that's like an artist or a creator or has made something or paints something or does customs or you know that kind of vein of it not the people that are not that there's anything wrong with this but if you're, you're like the putting it in a box and putting it on a shelf or something like that kind of thing mm -hmm. like that's we like the people that are like innovating with how they use their toys and doing interesting stuff. and we we kind of see, see the show as being a platform to not only give them exposure too because some of them are just on ig and they actually have never done anything on youtube or they have a small youtube channel they don't put much out so we're like hey come show this awesome content here like you've got a space station you've got amazing custom figures let's talk about it and show that and it you know, Joe and I are lazy customizers. We'll head swap. <laughs> so like we look at these yeah. guys work. We're like, oh, if only we didn't have kids, we could do that yes. too. Um, so that that's part of what the show is. And then the rest of the channel, we didn't know what the heck we were doing for like the first six months, nine months, right? We're like, oh, we should do, uh, I don't know, with our hands. All of these things. All of these yeah, things. So yeah, so everything. So we've kind of piloted towards, hey, we play with our toys. So let's talk about that. And then I'm also very passionate about making games and writing books so we combine those two things together so we have a 118 scale big old backyard like full uh what's it called full spectrum warfare um that's on the backyard and then we also started designing a tabletop game as well and it can be played with different figures so mm -hmm. that's really fun having people come and play test that having to do it on live stream uh, and being able to like share that fun of playing with toys as an adult 
So uh, you're you're um, you mentioned the people who are being creative. Uh, people are actually going out there and and making new uh, new toys, and that's something that a theme that's actually come up several times already as we're ramping up for Cobra Convergence. Um, but it sounds like you guys are um, kind of in the creative side a bit too. You said, mentioned that you liked uh, creating games. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Get into, get into a little more detail on what people might expect if they uh, check out your channel and. Um, what kind yeah. of uh, just what kind of things you're interested in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'll so I'll pitch it to Joe really quick, quick, and then we'll go back to the games. But Joe's a big artist; he's actually pretty talented. Um, so he does a lot of the graphics and stuff on our show, <clears throat> and I'm trying to yeah. pirate that um, that talent and have him design the art um, inside the game itself. And he already did a book cover for me that I had published a while ago. So. You know he, he's proven that he's got this talent that's great and i'm lucky to have him as my friend on the so. other end of that spectrum dom writes so hopefully our talents combined uh, yes we, yeah, yeah. Um, we should really have planned, yeah. planned that better <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i just i could i never know the things yeah so. I, I know i did it the wrong way first you get it mixed up um, so the games, we have one game that's, uh, I, I don't know if you're familiar with any tabletop games like, uh, Team Yankee or Flames of War or anything like that, or, or oh, no, or oh, Warhammer, oh, like that's a, that's a classic one. So, um, so I, I love doing these games like, man, but I got all these toys and I don't want to spend money on minis. What if, so I just combine yeah. mechanics of gameplay with the toys that we have on a 118 scale. So instead of inches, it's in feet, right? So, um, I, I expanded that into the backyard we gave it a few runs and honestly it's a lot of work it, like joe came over i was like hey man we're dragging all this stuff in the backyard yeah, yeah. and uh we were sweaty and, sore and we made afterwards, it, but... you made it easy on us too because he put like like little he built little plates for Please, like a yeah, squad yeah. level of you know like six joes would go on it and be like that's a squad and we we were moving them around six at a time and it was still a lot of work you know it's like <laughs> up and down and we're not young you know this yeah is not, no <laughs> anyone's gonna want to play this once they realize the work the last time you got in your backyard and ran around with so it's it's difficult <laughs> yeah. and then the other game idea is that's less labor intensive and a faster pickup game um it is to be used with any scale because you don't really have to worry about measuring uh what distance because it's arbitrary so you can play with four inch scale six inch scale whatever scale you want, um, because the distance is within a two foot by two foot area, which is much more manageable. More people have that flat surface to, be able to play on, and you can just take whatever action figures, Mythic Legions, Marvel Legends, G.I. Joe, you can mix them up if you want to, and we're creating a kind of an agnostic rule-based system that follows either sci-fi or fantasy. So if you have, if you are lonely and you're like, hey man, I want to play with some toys and I, I feel weird doing that, well, here's some rules and a little bit of story that you can add to it yeah. and roll some dice and maybe you won't feel so much like a weirdo. Um, so that's our idea. Well, I will feel like a weirdo anyway because I am one, but I appreciate <laughs> the, at least the structure, you know, for, for the weirdness. Yeah. Um, th there is, there is a, a contingent out there um, within the toy YouTube sphere uh, that's really into uh, playing with their toys. Uh, G.I. Joburg is one that, that comes to mind. Yeah. Those guys uh, do their action scenes and their their, their storylines. Yeah, it's like um, play action uh, movies. Yes. So, um, first of all, uh, do you like that kind of thing? And second of all, um, don't have uh, to do it would myself. this be something maybe that appeals to those guys who, who uh, will take their toys out in the backyard and uh, Hopefully. Uh, make little movies? Is this maybe something uh, that they should look into as maybe another way of enjoying their toys? Yes, because um, I actually got to meet one of the guys from G.I. Joe Berg. And I think, and I told him this dude, like, hey, this you are inspiring. You allowed people mm -hmm. to be comfortable with making sound effects of the noise in front of a camera and playing with your toys. Like, to be able to create that new standard, that safe space, to be like, hey, this is okay. It's acceptable. Awesome. Like, very mild oh, yeah. the channel, right? Yeah. And it's not to take away from any other creators, anybody's doing anything else, but that is a milestone. And all the other channels that have come afterwards and done play motion. Like it's it's phenomenal to be able to see that play, right? <clears throat> if you enjoy that, but you're not really sure if you want to make the sound effects, and you're not really sure, like, well, what am I supposed to do? Because we're adults, and for some of adults, that piece of the brain just left in childhood, but you still like to fidget with them, but maybe you want to do a little something more. This the game structure allows that. And there is a narrative piece too, with like asking you questions for your character, like, hey. 
Um, it's not just like I roll a dice and it's done mechanically. There are some questions that prompt and you fill in like, oh, maybe that's my brother. I never really thought about that before. I guess I don't really know my password. Whatever it is, then you're allowed to imprint on that. Or you want to take Roadblock and you want to play as Roadblock, you can imprint that onto whatever this card is. So yes, I would say though it's more structured and less story flow. Like G.I. Joe Berg clearly has like a script, an outline, you know, the, the script and narratives, like it's built like a show. This is more structured like a game. Um, and uh, I mean, it sounds like games uh, ha- are important to you and have been. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your background, about um, how you um, kind of came into your own fandom and what ultimately ultimately made you want to do that uh, in a public setting, in a public format. It is, Jeff. I guess. I guess. <laughs> what made us want to do this in a public format? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, so, so again, I mean, I kind of mentioned this, but, uh, so me and Dom are friends. We've been friends for a very long time. We bonded over like the GI Joe's kind of in high school age. Mm -hmm. Like we still actually went to comic shops and bought stuff up when our friends were kind of selling all their collections. We were the ones buying it from them. So like a lot of our collection is like just all of my friends toys now, you know, like, you know, kind of thing. (laughs) Um, so we've been hoarding our gi joes for quite some time (laughs) then eventually dom started to put more of a serious story on it and we kind of changed it from gi joe to something like more like our creation kind of thing and Mm -hmm. then uh that's what made dom's books happen so like we were kind of like almost playing out the plot of his book line sometimes or he'd test things out and be like okay that didn't work but um eventually we like i've had a podcast another one for a while and we sort of have always talked about wanting to do something like that for so long, especially since I'm capable of, you know, doing all the technical work. So with Dom being in the military, we're kind of bouncing around forever. And like, we sort of finally settled on, Hey, we're in the same time zone. Finally, let's sit down and actually put our stuff out there. Um, So that's kind of it. I mean, like that was really what, I mean, we'd always wanted to do something like this. We just never really had the time or the space. Adult life. life Yeah. 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 Kind of thing. To get it together to to make something like this, it's like our st- we act as our channels like seven years old, but it's really like two years old, you know, kind of thing. like because we feel like we've known each like we've had this idea burning forever. So like we're just kind of you know going with so it. you guys had the rapport before you started. Oh you yeah, know, yeah, you didn't have to develop the chemistry. You guys yeah. already had that when had yeah we always. Worse. It's we've always worse, hated though. each other yeah, yeah it's <laughs> uh you, you talked about a uh, gi joe you talked also talked about uh some other properties um uh can you talk about just like the the action figures the comic books just the the in general the the properties that um that are near and dear to your heart what are the ones that most inspire you and are most important to you Ooh. Mm-hmm. yeah so i i think and this will this will just turn away all of your fans immediately. Um, I think Joy Toy has become my favorite uh, three quarter inch line. Like I, no, they're I have fantastic. To, yeah. I love. I, they are expensive. They are a little fragile. I get that, but I love the fact that they don't come with any baggage. They are three dudes in armor with with a theme, and that's it. And I'm like, oh, I can use these for anything. Here's three red dudes. Here's mm-hmm. three whatever. Here's some maintenance guys. Like this is awesome. So you can you can bundle them in with your GI Joe set to like work on your aircraft carrier you want to. Or they can be their own thing, and I can take twenty fifth, uh, you know, modern style twenty fifth heads and pop them on Joy Toy heads and swap them around. They are they are what I've been waiting for. Um, and I wish, I wish, I wish Marauder would jump to sci fi, and mm-hmm. then Marauder would quickly surpass them because Marauder's a little more durable, and you get that a la carte kind of thing. Going yeah, the all, yeah, the, Oof, the, the make your own sci-fi. figure. They're, the build a bear option on uh, Marauder's I, Inc. is awesome. Direct yeah. deposit my paycheck. That's where yeah. it's going every month. <laughs> every <laughs> here you go. Right to Marauder. Yep. <laughs> so uh, th- those are three quarter scale ones for me, and then. The big scale, like I do collect Marvel Legends because I'm a big comic book nerd, but Mythic Legions, soon to be Savage Crucible also, those are my fantasy lines. Like I never got to boss fight, but the six inch fantasy lines, those are definitely my two. Mm. And then Joe, I don't know if you have any deviations. I mean, I inspirations mostly, yeah, wise, yeah. obviously G.I. Joe. We love G.I. Joe. Yeah. We've bonded over G.I. Joe, but like in the comics too, not just the toys, but like, sure. and I, honestly, not so much the cartoon. I like I liked the movie sort of, I mean, but everyone hates the movie for the Cobra Law stuff, but you know. <laughs> I sort of didn't care <laughs> when I was a kid, but um, or rather, I guess it worked on me when I was a kid. Uh, but uh, like 
the cartoon's a little sillier. I liked more of the comic, the more serious style of the comic books and how they were treating the characters and stuff like that. So we kind of go more of the realistic route, yeah. less of like the lasers and everyone just bails out of their planes and people yeah. actually die and stuff. Um, comics wise, I'm a, I mean, I like everything, but DC's near and dear to my heart. So I've been, like, I mean, literally Batman and Superman are right behind me, but you know. Um, yeah, I've been reading comics forever. That's why I started doing art. That's where a lot of my inspiration comes from, you know. Joe's the, the DC books. guy and I'm the Marvel guy. You can say I got X-Men <laughs> and oh wait, I actually have a Batman back here. All right, so there you go. So uh, I, there I you go. yeah, and his, his bandwidth for Marvel is my the same as my bandwidth for DC. Yeah, and, yeah and you there don't you, you don't feud over this. This is there's no, peace, no. there's peace between I like all Marvel I like all comics. Well, I, it's no, not I just it, gravitate more towards capes and tights and less. But I like, get to learn Punisher. all the DC stuff from him. Like, yeah. like <laughs> when things come out, I'm like, what what is this now? And I'll go pick up something like what's zero hour? What like oh well there was also also, like, I mean, when we were when we were younger, and we'd go to the comic shop for every Wednesday or something, yeah. we'd be like, "Here's here, here's my X Men, and I'll take I'll take your Batman yeah, 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 kind of yeah. thing." And we'd be like, "And we read everything and only paid for half of it," you know, kind of thing. Uh, you guys, um, uh, obviously, you've been uh, you've known each other since kids. Uh, you were kids. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been collecting and playing and reading comic books and and drawing. Um, but you also talk about how like uh, in that. Uh, gi joe movie the cobra law thing when you were a kid that worked on you you know um how how have has your um attitude or approach to uh the things that you loved as a kid changed as you've gotten older hmm. so so some of it <laughs> some of it's kind of the same for me to be honest like i never liked some of the bug stuff in the movie but I always thought yeah, Nemesis yeah. Enforcer and the dudes with the blades were cool. And still oh, yeah, to this day, awesome. I'm like, those are still pretty cool. Like, I like yeah. Dune. I could see those guys fitting into, like, a Dune type of setting world. Those giant like, scythe blades were, I mean, yeah. those things were insane. They're awesome. I regret they didn't kill more G.I. Joes with them. Um, <laughs> so, so They got for, cold feet after Optimus Prime died. There there, yeah, crash. there you go. <laughs> we can't show these guys getting lopped in half, all right? Yeah. Um, so all some the things, 80s kids will freak out. Some things were tamed, uh, and it's not just nostalgia bias. We all have that. We all love Snake Eyes or Optimus and Wolverine because, you know, that's our hero. That's who we loved as a kid. So some things were tamed with that also. But I still appreciate a lot of things that I did as a kid. But I've also grown to appreciate certain other things because I have kids. There's a lot of gimmicks and toys that I look at now as an adult. I'm like, why? This is stupid. Why is this spring rope thing here? But my five-year-old would run in and be like, Dad, they need to climb. He'll play with the spring rope thing. We'll, we'll have to have reasons to play with that. He's like, it's hard to spill. We have to use the rope. I'm like geniuses i'm so sorry hasbro you were totally right like, they knew what they were they doing knew what they were doing <laughs> Flip things you know that like the the fake disguise wall things finn's like yeah, yeah. this guy i'm like it's just a different toy son but, but <laughs> what i've come to appreciate is that those gimmicks aren't just to sell a toy they actually harbor imagination they actually foster imagination i should say and they let the kids play that out i was like man i'm sorry i'm very sorry toy designers i pooped all over this that my jaded adult poop in this way to go so that has changed back and forth. the way you look at it or yeah, something absolutely. that's on the shelf oh, okay. yeah yeah because yeah. now i see the play value and now i'm like oh that's not just stupid that is play i'm just i don't see that as an adult now right i want the more realistic like yeah. superposable like you know so mm -hmm. um but joe i don't know if that uh i mean i don't think i've it's changed all that much for me either honestly like it's just kind of all, I, if anything we've we've graduated towards like a joy toy or we waste a little bit more money on a three and three quarter figure that will i would have been like 40 dollars. are you out of your mind you know kind of thing like a few years ago but and also comics wise it's really just like you you grow up you your tastes expand it's not like i stopped reading superman and batman i just started reading other independent comics and more marvel and more of this and more of the weird creator stuff that's out there that's not like you know indie comics basically but you know the like your your tastes broaden i would say but i've never closed the door on anything really from the, my past I, it's kind of just more of like how can I incorporate that old stuff into what I'm doing now? I mean, Winnie, Winnie the Pooh and I don't talk anymore, so. <laughs> don't you? No. Well, Shut the door, oh, that okay. guy. Well, yeah, nobody will see this if you want to confess anything. I promise <laughs> it will not go up on the internet. I see the I see the record. No, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, oh, you're on to me. Um, so, uh, 
uh, I get, we're, we've got a Cobra centered event, so I yeah. guess I would be remiss if I didn't ask about Cobra. Do you have? Is there a Cobra uh, character uh, that uh, you you are the most fond of, or that you have the most connection with? I'll, I'll let Joe go first on this one. Yeah, I know Joe. <laughs> I'll have an answer on this one. Yeah. You already know my answer. <laughs> I had a gun to my head. I'd be like, I know who it is. I can I tell know you. It is. Yeah. I know who it is. I know I, I'm Zartan, hands down. Yeah, I'm a yeah, huge yeah. Zartan fan. I loved that toy. Again, gimmicky when you were a kid. It changed colors. Mm-hmm. And he had masks. Like, I, like, are you kidding? Like, and he came with a vehicle, sort of. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but you know, that, but yeah, I've always been a huge Zartan like, fan. He appeals to your rogue character, like yeah, he, he's he got that like gimmicks, but he was yeah. a rogue type too. So <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I also, I mean, he's sort of, I mean, even when I was like really young, like he also just kind of has that like that Boba Fett to him, you know, like he's got that yeah. look that you're like, I don't know what it is, but I love this, and I and I want to play with that toy, you know. So even before I knew his character or what he was, really, it was more about like. This guy just looks cool. I don't understand what he's wearing. What he's wearing? Shirt? No shirt? Armor? I don't get it. None of this makes sense. But I'm gonna go with it. Wearing a weird cyberpunk <laughs> weird hood ball. that's not attached yeah, to anything. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I have asked uh, Ron Rudat sometime like where where did you get this idea? I don't know that mm-hmm. he knows where he got all the ideas. <laughs> he was listening um, to a lot of David Bowie. That's Ziggy Stardust. Fever hey. dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but Dom, you have a you have a cobra that uh, that you most are fond of. I do, and um, so I so I, it's two part. One, I I always loved Cobra more than the Joes because it's the same with the Empire. I always loved that uniformity of seeing those vipers out there and that dark oh, yeah. blue with those masks. I was always like, oh man, those guys are so cool. I hated seeing them just get knocked over like puppets. <laughs> um, that's why I appreciate the comics like this where they actually are like. A little bit elite and it can hold their own i'm like there you go like look at all this cool kit you spent millions on this army and they're just like fodder getting knocked over by balloons um so so i love the troopers but my favorite uh, and i think this is i think he's grown more in our community than we were kids because i had no idea who firefly was as a kid no oh idea. yeah for but sure nowadays a lot of adults are like oh firefly like he's written like they made him into a classified figure i mm-hmm. if i had looked back like 10 years ago like nobody knows who this character is right um mm-hmm. i didn't know who he was as a kid but I started reading the Hama version uh, of, or the later Hama uh, issues and Fireblade became, he popped out and he had this interesting intrigue and he tied into the hard master's death with Zartan. And then yeah, that was great. double, double betrayal. I was like, Whoa, who is this guy that came out of nowhere? So, and then I started looking and I was like, man, look at the saboteur and he's got cool gray and black camo. And, and he was a mercenary for Cobra. He didn't always work for them. I was like, oh, I love this dude, man. So mm-hmm. Firefly is definitely my my number one. Firefly was one that I, I even back in 1984, he was just super cool. Like that yeah. he had that dark uh camouflage, that gray, and everything was like all tactical for uh infiltration and stuff. But then in the animated series, he was very used very little. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. as you mentioned, Hama used him in the comic book. But later, uh, in that those first few years, you're like, he's there for a second and then he's gone. Um, and I, yeah. yeah, you're probably right. He's getting a bit more uh, appreciation now because people are going back and and, and realizing how how cool that uh, yeah. that was. Um, so uh, I know we're recording this uh, before Cobra Convergence gets started. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, um, at this point, you you probably won't be able to spoil anything that you're doing uh but i know that you're working on it we're Um, cooking up a something yeah (laughs) um uh, i do want to remind everybody that as you're seeing this uh toy dominations uh contribution should be up and the link will be uh in the description of this video so make sure you check that out um so but more in general um where would you like to see your channel go what 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 would you like to see uh happen and what would you like to do What, what are the the burning things on your mind that you mm. want to do with your channel in the near future. I feel like we should shoot really, really low here. So when this comes out and we haven't met that bar, we're <laughs> safe. You know, yeah. like, I'd like to get two more subscribers. Like yeah. I know, I know the answer. Like I know the answer. Five more we likes. we we're big proponents of positivity in the toy community. Yeah. We really don't. I like uh, like yelling about QC and bitching about Hasbro all the time. And like I, I just don't. I don't care. I like it's. Bad stuff happens. Good stuff happens. Stuff is more expensive now. I get it. Like, you know, but so we're more of like, 
let's just open our toys and have fun and and remember why you spend all this money on these in the first place. And I would like to see that community grow and that kind of attitude shift more into the light as opposed to being all the negativity that kind of gets a lot of a lot of views, you know, yeah. so to speak. So I think that would be kind of like our lofty idealistic yeah. goal. I, I think that's definitely the community you're trying to foster. Not being fanboys to any and beholden to any company. We're, we criticize too. We're like, I was disappointed in this. I didn't like this. I, oh, yeah, I wouldn't I was, be buying yeah, that. Yeah. That's, There's nothing wrong that, with it, constructive criticism. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When it's actually constructive criticism, say yeah. like, I'm going to give you some constructive criticism. You're an idiot. Like that doesn't, <laughs> that's not helpful, right? Come so, on, Hasbro. So um, yeah, Joe, Joe's spot on. And like, we just had a stream last night where we had people jumping on an irregular time and all the positivity throughout the comments, you know, yeah. uh, the members start to know each other. They follow each other. I'm like, man, that is, that is, awesome to be able to have those type of people um surround you and then bring in more like that and i think that mm -hmm. i hope that's a growing trend um the other thing we'd really like to be able to do with the channel too uh, is embrace play like play with your toys right so um if we were to have this channel in another year uh, we've already been experimenting with live streams of actually playing the game i would love to be able to do similar to what D, &D channels do and just like hey tonight we're just playing a game and here's our guest to be able to play with us and have people do it virtually I would also absolutely love, and our Joe and my plan is to publish the game and be able to have it in people's hands and like go check it out and go download some more cards. Or yeah, like there's the link in the description. What you do We're playing it, yeah. a little version of it, but you can go check it out, you know, kind of thing. The other, the other inspiring thing that um, we were talking to some content creators about last night, they, they build like these huge uh, Empire Toy Works or Rocket Station, if you're familiar with that, like huge play sets. Um, there are a lot of people are building these things too. So it's like, hey, you know, it'd be really cool if we played a game that actually fed into y'all's canon. So we talked to one of the, the stations, Skybound Station. He's like, hey, man, let's do this thing where we play a game on your channel. And then we all go out to our content and we make the results from those games. Mm -hmm. So like this yeah. happened to my station, this happened to mine. So you have like this growing narrative of people get to play on their content and shape it however they want to. And then it's kind of like this big cycle. And I was like, that, that's amazing to be able to help other people play with their stuff and see the yeah and that's the kind of thing that you don't yeah. plan for it just kind of like came about sort mm -hmm. of you know through like so. just meeting these people and kind of getting to know uh you know the the random uh, people on ig and people you follow and then you sort of talk to them and then they're on your show for a minute and all these it, ideas kind of coalesce you know it's kind of awesome and it's also we've also got friends too who don't uh necessarily play the way we do right so like uh eric from no you grow up is not gi joe at all he does team nt um adam from go figure uh is an awesome restorationist uh toy connections right like adam from goes like all these people they're still our friends so we're we're gonna start other doing things like hey we just want to hang out like i know you guys don't customize like this or play but we still have stuff we can talk about so we did like uh cartoons of the 90s like our like exo squad's my favorite mm -hmm. joe's the 1980s Adam. so we still like to be able to do those things too and just hang out and talk again and that more positive aspect of like, hey, what do you love? This is the things mm -hmm. that we like too. So yeah, um, yeah, I think that's kind of our trident, I guess, of our, <laughs> our <laughs> channel pursuit. Um, you, you talk about um, uh, being positive, and uh, maybe we'll call it um, not unreasonable criticism. There you go. <laughs> um, that uh, would would you say that when you uh, go in that direction, and when you commit to that direction, and you uh, you're talking about what you love more than what you hate uh don't you find like so there are uh there is an audience that gravitates toward that 100 yeah. um it, it may seem like uh everybody goes and watches the the hyperbole but there is uh there is an audience that is looking specifically for that more yeah. reasoned approach yeah i think so and there are good channels that are large that like pixel dance usually very oh, positive. Yeah, there's plenty of there's or, plenty yeah, of like uh, big channels that are positive yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. And, and that and it's not to disparage that we like those channels that are more positive you know regardless of the size of the account we we just tend to gravitate towards those people and reach out to them like hey we'd like to collaborate with you as well and mm -hmm. usually yeah. their fans kind of tend to like us too because it's the same kind of attitude so yeah, and it sounds like you you are uh, kind of uh, building a community of uh, fans and viewers. You you mentioned that uh, you know people start showing up, and and uh, so it sounds it sounds like you're really um, really on your way toward building that. Kind well, of hopefully, community. that's really <laughs> uh, that, that's hopefully. Really, I I just think that's fantastic. I I just love to see it. Um, well, we're we're uh, we're getting close to our time limit i would like to wrap up by just giving you each uh, an opportunity to uh, uh say any parting words any final uh comments before we wrap up and uh tell everybody to go check out your channel and check out your cobra convergence uh, presentation mm. yeah 
Joe, you got anything? I guess uh, exactly what he just said. Check out our <laughs> channel and check out our, whatever we decide to do for Cobra Convergence. I know we have a few ideas. We haven't settled on it specifically, but we've got a lot of time. But, um, well, not too much time. we got to get going, Tom. <laughs> but we, it goes fast. <laughs> But um, but uh, yeah, we've we've got a couple ideas, and hopefully, whatever we do, whichever idea we kind of go down, it'll it'll be something worth uh, f- worth watching for Cobra Convergence. It's, it's going to be fun, and it's going to be playing with your toys. Like those are the yeah. two things. You're gonna be <laughs> that's on. that's so that's for you sure. Can count on those two those two themes at least. <laughs> um, no, so first, thank you very much for being able to set this up. I think it's awesome. This is a positive. If you weren't picking up on this, this is a positive growing community act thing that you are doing right now. Like, yes. um, so this is really cool that you're able to set up these interviews. You're setting up platforms. I've seen you on the Facebook group. Be like, I've tried to get these people. Like, that's a lot of work that you've taken on your shoulders uh, to organize this. So um, it's and you've gone out of your way to be like, hey, I'll pop on your channel if you want to. So I appreciate. Remember, like. Channels like you who have a larger growth are like, hey, let me, it doesn't matter who you are, jump in here. I, I thought that was really cool. Um, I've been on Toy Connection with you in the past before, and I watch your channel every now and then too. Um, so again, you have that same type of positivity, or at least the, um, what is it, the, the the ability to rationally be able to discuss a topic or a mm-hmm. point. So I've always appreciated about your content. Well, and I appreciate you, this you. opportunity. Um, and, and yeah, so anyone who's interested in looking at the channel in the future, um please look at us on ig like we post a lot of stuff in there too we kind of straddle both the youtube and the ig equally um and we're exploring more and more in these games you're interested in how you play come on and check it out all right awesome yeah well thank you guys uh and thank you thank you for the kind words and thank you for participating really really thank you for being in cobra convergence this year i hope you have a blast I hope you love it so much that you have to come back next year. Uh, oh, it's a little, it's an annual thing. To seeing what you're doing. So, uh, with that, I'll say, um, everyone who's watching this, thanks for watching and go check out toy domination now. Uh, and you should see, be able to see what they've done for Cobra convergence seven. So, uh, thanks everyone. And we will see you again soon. Man, Joe, I hope we did a good video. I, I mean, no, it was really good. We've already I hope, done it. I hope we do. We've already done it. The pressure is on. Yeah. <laughs> thanks again.